Happy New Year guys, welcome to 2020. I thought it would be fun uh, to start off the year with a quick walkthrough of all my grills and smokers. Uh, so I, I wanted to give you guys a chance to see what we're dealing with at the start of this year and get your input on what you'd like to see more or less of in 2020. So after I do this walkthrough, if you would, let me know in the description box, in the description box. If you have access to that description box, let me know because you're not supposed to. All right, my friends, this is the spot that you guys see quite a bit of. Typically, this is where whatever grill I am using sits, and I kind of treat the rest of the patio as a bit of a parking lot. I got my wood pile right here, refilled that with post oak. Um, it is about to rain, so this is going to be the quickest uh, video ever. I'm going to try to do this in one take if I can. This is a spot you guys don't see as much of. I'll get back to that in a minute, but... Here is my Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. I love this grill. Uh, I get asked a lot, if I could only have one grill, what would it be? I did a video on that. I'll put a link to that in the corner. But this is definitely, if it's not, if it's not the top one, it's definitely close to the top one. When I got my LSG, that kind of, that guy over there kind of changed things. But it, that, that's more of a dedicated smoker. I'll get to that in a second. This is uh, the spot where hopefully the Weber smoke fire is gonna go when it gets here. Um, this is the one of the new ones, the Ranch Kettle. Such a fun cooker. Um, it is huge. It's kind of hard to get a sense of the perspective of this thing until you see it right next to a normal 22 inch cooker. Just huge, just huge, I love it. This is my uh, customized red Weber Performer. I did a whole video on that. Y'all have to check out that video. It was so much fun to make. Um, I'll put a link to that in the corner. You can see that now, um, but we did a lot of customization with this guy. Um, so much fun, so much fun. This is the Primo Oval XL. Nice cooker. Probably the nicest Kamado I have. Um, I really enjoy cooking on this. The lid's kind of heavy, but uh, other than that, it's a, it's a good cooker. Here's the Kamado Joe Big Joe, you guys know this one. I've had this for a couple years. It's a, a lot of fun, very versatile. They come out with a new model on this. I don't know much about it, but anyways, I got the older version. This is the Classic 2, or wait a minute, no. Big Joe 2, I don't know, when I got it, it didn't have these names for it, so it's hard to keep up. But this is a second version, um, the kind you can get at Costco for really, really cheap if you want to. This is my Lone Star Grills Offset Smoker. Uh, Lone Star Grills is a sponsor of this channel, but they're not sponsoring this video, and I'll still tell you this is the best offset cooker I've ever had. This is a 24 by 48 with attached warming oven and metal art and a lot of other bells and whistles that I just love. If you'd like to see more on that, I'll put a link in the corner to the playlist of all the videos I've done with the Lone Star Grills. I think you'll really like it. This is my gas grill. Uh, we use it. I got in trouble last time for making fun of my gas grill. It's not that I don't like the gas grill. It's fine. The kids need something to cook on. So here is the pit barrel cooker. Uh, this is a new one since the last time I did this video. By the way, I did a, a video similar to this a uh, year and a half, two years ago. I'll put a link to that in the corner. It's really fun. It's a rib and chicken cooking machine for me. This is the 26 inch Weber kettle. Um, maybe the best bang for your buck in barbecue. Uh, it's huge. Again, it's like the ranch, it's deceptively large. Uh, it's hard to kind of get a sense of the scale until you stand right up next to it. Cause it only sounds like it's four inches more than the 22 inch, but really in surface area, it's a lot more than that. It's like, I, I did the math at one point, but it's 30 or 40%, something like that. This is the Weber Jumbo Joe. This is probably the smallest Weber grill I would recommend. Um, but it's really not that small. It's 18 inches, which is the same size or very similar in size to a uh, big green egg large. So to put that in perspective, the large, they're great. It's just a little bit bigger, but not by much. And then this is the, this is a uh, Cajun Bandit rotisserie ring that I've been playing around with. That's a lot of fun. This is the famous red Weber kettle. I found this on sale at, uh, at Home Depot around Christmas time last year for $75. So I had to pick that up. I just think the red color is so beautiful. This is a standard Weber kettle, a green version. This is one of the, again, one of the best bangs for your buck in barbecue. If you've only got $150 or so to spend, I'm actually not sure what they cost now. This would be a great, great starter and finisher cooker. You'd never have to upgrade if you didn't want to. One thing I would say, 
is you can this this ash bucket right here this is key if you're gonna spend the money to get a, a cooker that's gonna last you forever I don't think you'll ever regret the ash clean out system and the Weber kettle I would go ahead and spring for that there's a few other there's a few other little odds and ends you get for spending the extra 50 bucks or so for this this is the the upgraded version but um, I think you'll be really really happy with this and I wouldn't I wouldn't not I wouldn't not get the ash bucket to save money I don't think it's worth it in the long run all right here we have the 22 inch Weber Smoky Mountain you guys have seen a lot of great cooks on this um, especially that one where Harry Sue came over and we cooked briskets at 400 degrees I did a side-by-side -side taste test of those that was that was such a fun day I'll put a link to that in the corner so you can go check that out or you can just search Harry Sue baby back maniac or Harry Sue brisket baby back maniac I'm sure it'll come up this is a great cooker but but it does collect water and therefore has a tendency to mold in warmer climates like Texas. So that is something to be aware of. Um, and I have found that having a cover doesn't seem to help and it might actually make it worse. So usually I either keep this in the garage or break it down. Um, that's just how I do it. This is a, a prep table. It's not necessarily meant to go out here uh, outside but I've had it out here for about a year and it's fine if you keep water off the top it'll last a lot longer I think I got it for 200 bucks I'll put a link to this in the description box but the key is make sure you get the one with the adjustable legs because that way you know if you want to sit down you can and if you want to um, if you want to stand up you can uh, obviously but this is a really really nice height um, here is the beefer here is the Acorn Junior, and here is the Mini Max. I've been playing with these a lot lately. I really enjoy these cookers. Um, I've talked about this before. If you're looking for a portable cooker, I would actually recommend this over, over that. This is a fun cooker. It does have a, a bit of an issue with clean out. I've got, I got something on the way called a Kick Ash Pan. Um, I think that's what they call it. That should make it a lot easier. Thanks to my friend Big Big Green Craig, or formerly Big Green Craig, now it's Craig Tabor. Um, he uh, turned me onto that. This is just a fun, fun cooker. I got this. My, my wife picked this up on sale at Walmart for I don't know. It's normally 150, and I, I think I've told y'all before about this, but I think it was 30. $37 or something like that. 37.50. It was a scratch and dent end of sale thing at Walmart, which was really nice. This is my Gabby's Grills uh, attachment. This goes on a 22 inch kettle and it is probably the funnest thing to cook on ever. It's the most relaxing. It's like, I don't know, it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful toy. And I really appreciate Troy giving this to me. There's a lot of videos on my channel using this. Um, this is my charcoal caddy with my flamethrower attached to it. Uh, I'll put links to both these in in the uh, description box. In fact, I'll put links to everything I talk about uh, in the description box. But this makes rolling that caddy around or rolling that propane around so much easier. These are where I keep my wood chips in chunks. Got a uh, got a fire extinguisher, a couple fire extinguishers down there, you know, just in case. And then this is a, a Husky uh, storage container I got at I got it at Home Depot. I'll put a link below, but go check at Home Depot. Uh, because I, i'm pretty sure it's going to be cheaper it's going to be cheaper there but i think it was 400 dollars. you can lock things up and it's a really great way to organize everything basically so these are all the things that i use on a regular basis this is my thermo pen this is my most used thermometer and this is my most used leave-in thermometer it, it, of all the thermometers that are out there these are the ones i like the best currently and i'll put links to those below but if you're cooking mostly steaks or, or mostly burgers this is a really really good one it's very very fast it goes on sale all the time um i just i just really really like it thumbworks does it a good job and then this if you're doing barbecue more often this would be the one that you would want it has four probes and great range and it's a um it's a really really nice um uh, a nice thermometer to use plus it's the little things that really matter oops let me see it's stuck here it's got magnets by the way don't don't hook this to the side of don't put this on the side of a hot grill or you'll melt your you'll melt the glue on the back of these magnets but ask me how i know but it's also got a hook i'm not very good at doing this one handed let's see here it's also got a hook on the back so you can hang this on the side of a cooker or a kick kickstand it's little stuff like that that makes this just a really nice really nice thermometer to have and one of my favorites so 
And then you got your standard black gloves, um, leather charcoal gloves, and I use these all the time. Someday I'll do a whole video on, on these white uh, cloths, reusable, uh, I guess they're wash rags or something, but uh, I'll put links to all that in the description box. But this is my, this is my setup going in to 2020. Hang on, let me flip you around here. All right, guys, this is what we have to start with here in 2020. We've gained a few, we've lost a few, but I wanted to give you guys a sense of what I've got now because I haven't done a video like this in almost a year and a half, two years, something like that. And uh, this way you can tell me what you'd like to see more of or less of. If you see anything you like, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I got this huge email for, or note from YouTube about how I wasn't asking for subscribers enough and there's a whole sub-shaming thing. I can't believe YouTube's sub-shaming me here in 2020, but I would like to have you. If you are interested in coming along for the ride, I think 2020 is going to be a great year. So thanks for watching, guys. If you made it this far, I love you. appreciate it, and we will see you in the next one.